What's up, YTPC? Uncle Willie coming to you from the coop on this corn cob Tuesday. Cob Tuesday. Whatever you want to call it. But I'm not smoking a cob. A lot of people call it Taco Tuesday. I'm not having tacos either. I kind of had them yesterday. I had a taco salad for lunch. I'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to call it Bamboo Day. Little bamboo. Well, I can't say that. Cause that's not bamboo. It's faux bamboo. Faux meaning false. <laughs> so what's up guys? Been a couple days. Pardon me. I took advantage yesterday of Juneteenth. If you think about it now might be off the off topic for a minute here but i'm not gonna harp on it long but if you think about it there was only like two months that he could have brought that up and be in juneteenth or being a holiday it doesn't sound right with the two syllable month in front January 10th, nah, November 10th, July 10th, the only two that it sounds not as stupid is May 10th or June 10th, with like a one syllable month in front of it, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, a lot of people were off yesterday, and they they were appreciative of being off. Probably not so much the holiday, but being off in general. So with that being said, I met a couple buddies yesterday. They were off for the holiday. So I rode down to uh, Winchester, Virginia. Met up with a couple buddies. One of you may, one of them you may know, JC from JC Pipes and Knives. You might have seen the picture I posted yesterday that was taken of him and I. And then our buddy Tim. Now, Tim, I've only met him twice. So, in your opinion, how many times do you have to meet somebody? Or be acquainted with somebody before you call them a friend or a buddy I guess it depends on you how long you want to associate with someone before you give in and say yeah that's a friend of mine well, that's my buddy I guess it really depends on the person so me being me have been met Tim, having been met Tim twice now, I'm pulling him into my uh, circle and considering him a buddy, a friend. So me and a couple friends yesterday took advantage of the holiday, went down to, they came up, I went down, Winchester, went to a cigar shop. <sighs> Not long after they had opened, we were there yesterday morning. Pretty cool little shop. Right at the edge of Old Town, Winchester. So we, uh, we all picked out some items and purchased them, you know, like you, like you do at a new B&M, especially if you're gonna partake in their lounge, you really lounge etiquette you buy something and then you smoke it there you don't you just bring your own stuff and intend to smoke so we all purchased some stuff and sat around the guy was very accommodating for us they got six chairs in there 
and they were filled up, but he was bringing chairs out of the back room left and right because other guys were coming in and wanting to hang out. And this guy was very nice. It was a very pleasant visit, very welcoming to the, to the little circle they had there. I don't know that any of those guys were regulars. They didn't act like regulars, but they were all very nice. Everybody in there was very nice, talkative. You know, we had conversations with all the, the patrons. And as people left, the guy was taking the chairs out and putting them into, back in the back room, which is not a very big place. So when he, you know, he, he was accommodating as needed. He was there, Johnny on the spot, emptying the ashtrays for us. I, uh, they don't, the only thing is they didn't have anything, any drinks of any kind, no, nothing for sale. So I asked him if he had water. He, well, JC asked him if he had any, any drinks and he only had Mountain Dew at the time. I can't drink Mountain Dew being diabetic unless it's sugar free. But anyway, I asked him for water. He went in the back room, got me a cup of water, brought it out. Then he put a stand-up ashtray beside me to put my water, to set my water on like a little personal table, if you will. And he was removing ashtrays. He must have had a dozen of those stand-up ashtrays with the glass, a little handle on it. I know you've seen them, the old antique-looking ones. He's putting them out all over the place, and as people left, he cleaned them and put them back in the, in the back room. They got down to it was just us three in there, and we were we went and got some lunch at a little Mexican place. I can't think of the name of it. It was L something, <laughs> which that would be typical of a Mexican restaurant. It was L something. It, I, I I feel bad for not knowing it because it was actually a pretty good little restaurant. It was in Old Town, so Old Town is walking traffic only. We left the, the cigar lounge and went one block and made a left and no cars were allowed on that, that part of the street. The street that the lounge is on was called Piccadilly Street. And I don't know the name that the road that that, that was on, but it was, like I say, foot traffic only. It was about two blocks down. So it was about three blocks. We walked down there to it because you had to walk half of it anyway. So we went in there, had lunch. Service was good. They had a few, like a 10 minute wait, but they were pretty busy. Service was good. Mexican lady, uh, Spanish speaking. We, uh, we all had something different. Everybody cleaned their plate. I had a taco salad that was really good. Their pico de gallo was delicious. It was homemade, you could tell. Then we gathered ourselves after that and went to another cigar lounge called Long Creek Cigars. And if y'all see the so if y'all have seen the picture that I posted yesterday of me and JC, Tim took that picture of us while we were sitting in there. Well, Long Creek, they had about, I'm going to say they had like a dozen chairs. They had a nice size lounge with leather chairs set up. It was, a, it was a rather large area, and they had probably about a dozen chairs set up. I think they had a TV in there, which we weren't, we were just talking, talking to the regulars and the one guy. <laughs> I think his name was Greg. He said that he's in there all the time, that that, that place is like uh, granddaddy daycare for him. <laughs> uh, it was it was cool. Those All those guys was talking. And this one guy was telling a story, and I only caught half of it. And, I mean, bits and pieces. But it sounded like this guy, his granddad was in the, in the Army. And I didn't catch all of it because we were talking in our conversation down at the other end. But he had a buddy, they were in France together. 
and the and from what I could gather of the the story, after they had, was out of the army and out of France, they were trying to reconnect. And his granddad, they had he had found a contact through ever how he was able to do it back then, because obviously they didn't have Google and internet search and all that. Whatever how he was able to find out of it. He got the, the guy's phone number and called him and was talking to him and they were reminiscing about being in France and everything. And when his when his the granddad when his granddad asked the guy where he was living, the guy was living next door to him. They were neighbors that they had never met or talked or whatever. I mean, I'm sure some some of you have had a neighbor that just is like standoffish you don't talk to or whatever. I got one on the end down here. We haven't talked or nothing. But the guy was a neighbor that he had been in France with and it was 30 years later, 40 years, whatever it was. Like I said, I didn't catch the whole story. But the guy ended up being, he was talking to him and ended up being his neighbor. He asked him where he lived and he told him such and such street in the state and with the, in the city of the state and the guy was like, well, I'm your neighbor. I live next door or two doors down or wh whatever it was. It was right there, the same, where they were neighbors. Like, now, what, what's the chances of that? You know, that's pretty wild. That was pretty wild to, to hear bits and pieces of it. Yeah, we had a blast of Every time I've met up with anybody from the YTPC, it has always been a blast. And yesterday was no exception. We had a good time talking. We had, you know, stories were flying from old, old to new. And it was a real good time. And it's really nice meeting Tim again and being able to add somebody else into my buddy list. So how long do you let somebody be an acquaintance before you consider them a friend or a buddy or pal or whatever you call a mate? You know, how long before you say that they're your mate, your buddy, your pal, your friend? How long do you, how long does it take for you? To be honest with you, for me, it, it depends on the person. I've known some people that I've met a half a dozen times and I just consider them acquaintances. You know how some people can just rub you and you're like, yeah, that's not a friend. It's just somebody I know. I know a lot of people like that. I have a lot of acquaintances. But Tim, I consider him a buddy now. After two meetings, he's pretty cool. He's a cool guy. Tall. I have to look up at him. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's a cool guy. He's a, he's a uh, Steeler fan. And I won't hold that against him. Since I don't watch football anymore, so I don't really care what fan you are. I haven't watched football in years. So yeah, it was a really good time yesterday. It was time well spent, like I said. Had a new friend, met some new acquaintances at the at both lounges. You know, conversation all day of all sorts. It's just fun when you get out there and meet somebody. When I, I encourage it. I know Ethan, Parsimonious Piper, and Sean. Ghost Cop, they both encouraged it after we had our meetup a couple weeks ago. I feel fortunate that I have met up with three different members of the YTPC within, what, three or four weeks. I feel fortunate. I was able to meet two of them what, three or four weeks ago and then met another guy yesterday and got a new friend out of it. The YTPC is a great 
place to hang out and great people to hang out with. It's just, it's just fabulous, man. I don't know, I don't know how else to, to describe it. It's just a really good time. So now I'm gonna do some housekeeping. I know it. I've rambled on and ran my mouth for like 15 minutes. I'm smoking my Radiche rind, rind rust, rustication with the uh, faux bamboo. That's actually dr holes drilled in it, or surface holes drilled in it. They don't go all the way through. And then see the little one on the top and then they reversed it with one on the bottom to make it look like bamboo. It's a really nice little poker smooth black stem and I have a striker on the bottom yep it's a beautiful little pipe smokes great it's a great smoking pipe <laughs> when you don't sit there and talk and let it run and go dry And what I have in it is going to surprise you. It's an HH, McBaron HH line. Limited edition. This is from June. 2021 HH Rustica it says on the back June 21 that's what I paid for it yes I bought it yesterday at the first uh, B&M we went to wait on oh, let me shout them out John B Hayes Winchester Virginia John B Hayes on 50 East Piccadilly Street Winchester, Virginia, right at the edge of Old Town. That's where I picked that up at. And twenty-five fifty for this tin, but this is a three and a half ounce tin. So it's like getting two regular tins, and that would have broke down to twelve something a tin if you if they were if they had have sold them like that, but they didn't. When they released us two years ago. They sold it in the 3.510. You can see it says 2021 release. Oh, this is a jar that I bought, or a tin that I bought at the time. And, uh, I don't know how well this will show up, but. It's ketchup. That when I opened it yesterday and smelt it again for the first time in two years. I bought it, smoked one bowl. I don't think I smoked two bowls out of it. I bought it, crammed it in here. I well, didn't cram it, but I put it in here. Got plenty of room in there. It smells good to me got that vinegary ketchupy barbecuey smell like a uh, dark fired stuff this is a hot pressed flake I'll read you to 10 two branches of the Nicotania tobacco family is blended the native tobacco from Virginia and the tobacco we are used to smoke in a pipe. The combination is one of a kind, provide a bold smoke both in taste and strength. Due to hot press, the natural flavors marry together in its own unique way. So being hot pressed, and it's a couple Virginias, and that's what I was showing you, the little white surface on the on that like little sugar built up from being aging for two years 
I forgot how good it is. But he had like five or six tens of it. I haven't smoked it in two years. I didn't see why I needed to buy what he had. It's good. When I first lit it, I had just brushed my teeth right beforehand, and that played a lot on the flavors. I couldn't get nothing out of it. Just minty. <laughs> But I'm getting some more flavors out of it now. Old Tim yesterday, when I showed him, I picked it up. He said, you know, it wasn't bad, but I didn't, he said, I didn't get a lot of flavor out of it when he smoked it, when it was released. And I was like, to be honest, I just remember it being strong. I know that for this to be Virginia's, it's not biting me at all, and it does have that barbecue-y, ketchup -y, vinegary. Smoke is thick, creamy. H.H. H. Rustica. Rustica. Good stuff to me. Too strong for a lot of people. And I feel bad for them. Because they're missing out. I think I'll be smoking a little bit more of this here in the future. So guys, I'm going to jump. I'm already over 20 minutes. I've been rambling and babbling, and but it was well worth the video for me because I was able to explain my sincerity and yeah, of yesterday's time spent with a couple buddies. And we were ready. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny how you get out in the wild and so many people are ready. So, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And with that being said, until next time, you know what to do. Stuff them and puff them.